Question for Coach Lashley. Right after looking at the film from the, the first scrimmage, how did you kind of come away from it? Um, did some good things. You know, I think we had, uh, we scored four touchdowns. Um, all three quarterbacks, you know, led a scoring drive. Um, there was there was also inconsistencies, and that's what we've been talking about, and that's expected in your first scrimmage. Um, you know, the one thing that really stood out is uh, every drive we scored a touchdown, we had an explosive play, and that's something we know, and that's something we've stressed. So uh, that was good for us to be able to show the guys, hey, explosive play, touchdown. And uh, so we had some guys make some plays. We got to make more plays. Uh, we got a lot of good um, evaluation on a lot of guys, and um, so that kind of helped us springboard into the second week. I thought you and Jess on the radio that optimally you'd like to have a decision in about a week or so towards the end of the camp portion of it, but that may not happen. Right. Why not? Right, other than the fact that they're probably competing equally, but I mean why why can't you make a decision in a couple an extra couple of weeks after spring? I mean it's not a newcomer from spring is my point. Well maybe it's because those guys are doing a good job not making it easy. You know, it doesn't have to be something negative all the time. And um, so, again, you know, when you break camp and go to school, I think next Tuesday, uh, it'd be great to, to have things narrowed down or to make that decision. But again, we're not going to hurry up and, and make the wrong decision just to make it to say we made it. Uh, if we're not making the decision, it's because we have multiple guys that are doing a good job. I can tell you that. It's not because we have two or three guys that God, he can't get it done today. He can't get it done. We have guys that are competing. And uh, like I said, all three of them uh, did a nice job at times. Um, you know, Jeremy hit a big home run post and got us down to the two on a scoring drive. Um, Sean hit an explosive play and then made a great throw to, to Marcus for a touchdown. John um, hit a big pass to Jason for a touchdown. So all three of them did some good things. All three of them obviously missed some things. Uh, but overall, I'd say they had a solid scrimmage and they're playing with a chip on their shoulder and uh, they're competing well. Um, no, by no means are we where we want to be in three weeks. Um, but I would say if we don't make a decision, it's because we feel like that they're making it tough on us. Is it possible you could even wait till game day? Yeah, it's always possible. Uh, I don't know if we've done that before. It's not maybe ideal, but again, if that's what's best for our team and for those guys, that's what we'll do. Are all three of them still in it at this point? Absolutely. Is it possible to have a two quarterback system? It's always possible. Um, it's not common, but it's been done before. Um, so we'll just kind of see where it leads. But again, like I told those guys, uh, we were talking on Saturday. You know, they got a chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, they know they they know what's out there. They know the perception, and, and uh, all they can do is is go go to work and do something about it, and uh, not make it easy on us. And that's what they're doing. Do you have a pecking order even in your own head when you go into each practice about this guy I'm really looking at right now that has really taken a step forward, and then, or. Is it so close that you're not even doing that every day? Um, human nature to do yeah, that. I mean, I would say human nature. You know, in the back of our minds, we kind of know how things are progressing. Uh, but at the same time, um, you may think you know something, but you see some other things each day that kind of lends you to say, hey, we just need to keep competing this thing out. And uh, and then again, the hard thing is we got three guys. So, for example, um, you have a hundred and something play scrimmage, but you got three guys, and how many reps? You know, are they getting with the ones versus how many with the twos and, and trying to bounce out and give them enough reps, same way every day in practice, and just to build enough reps to where you feel like you can make a proper decision, it's hard to do when you're rotating three. It's different if it's just two. So that's maybe another thing that makes us, hey, let's take it a little bit longer and make sure. Um, you know, we went live in the spring. We feel like we got all that information we need from a physical standpoint. So. When you guys went into that scrimmage, were you thinking that maybe we'll be able to narrow it down and, and do that? Or was and then after the scrimmage you went, we, we don't know if we can narrow it down. Is that what happened? Uh, probably a little bit accurate, yeah. I mean, I don't think we thought after one scrimmage we'd know exactly who the guy was. But, you know, it was possible. Um, and, again, they all three did enough good things to say, hey, this guy deserves to keep competing for the job. And so, yeah, we probably came out and said, hey, we just need to keep this thing going. And, and we've got week two. At that point, you only had five days in anyways. Let's start now getting to where the reps are reoccurring so we can see who can really continue to take strides forward and who kind of stays the same. I guess I was thinking about maybe turning it to two or whatever. But in what? I thought I was saying more maybe turning it to two than one guy. Correct. Yeah. No, that's – no, I, yeah. But what about uh, Cam Jordan? 
Martin, how did he perform the scrimmage and how has he responded since then? You he, he did fine. You know, he's a freshman. The one thing that you saw about him is he's, he's not scared to stick his neck in there. And he's not, I mean, he's not tiny, but he's not a big guy. He's a speed guy. And a lot of times you worry about those guys, you know, running out of bounds, falling down. He's not that type of guy. Uh, but for a guy like him that's fast, you just got to keep repping him because there's a lot going on in his head after at that time, that was the sixth practice. And if you're a fast guy and you're thinking and hesitating, you play a lot slower than you are. Um, hey, Nick Marshall's probably a good example. The first three or four or five games of that first year, he didn't run for a whole lot of yards. Well, he had a lot going on in his head. He was kind of learning on the fly, and all of a sudden it just clicked, and he started playing faster. So you just got to kind of hang with those guys. And I think uh, he's doing well. And once, whenever that point is, it slows down for him, then hopefully he'll, you'll see him play faster like he is. Do you feel like it's going to be like a 50-50 platoon between – carry on above it, you think they'll split carries pretty even? You know, I don't know. Because even the years like last year when we named a guy, and the year before, and then in uh, Trey's year, he wasn't really, we didn't know if he was the guy to start the season. Sometimes we got to get in the real game and kind of see how it sorts itself out at that position. Running back's a hard position. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about production. So you got to get him in the game and let him be productive and see who the most productive guy is. So it could balance out that way, it could not. I've never seen from Petway now that he's moved. You know, he's instinctive. He's natural. Uh, he's a big – I mean, he's a load. I mean, he goes north and south as good as any back I've ever seen. Um, it's just a matter of him continuing to get more and more comfortable with all the runs we run and the reads that are within it. And that's just a repetition thing, the protection side of things. I think he's doing a good job of that. But he just well, – you know, we're eight or nine practices in. He did it a little bit in the spring, but not full time. So, you know, you look at a guy like Carrion, he's way behind him just in a rep – uh, accumulation standpoint, but he's doing a, a nice job, and, and he's going. I mean, he's going to be he's not going to be fun to tackle on the second level. Grant, you talk about getting into the first game. Is it? Do you have to look at it a little differently? For the, the first game being who it is. In terms of just. In terms of being a little more certain about what you want to do and who you want to do. Yeah, I think so. And you know, at the end, the bottom line for us is we got to be a good team offense, and we may have a guy or two emerge as a star, but we may not. If we're a good team offense, it can be different guys each week. And what we're focusing on is guys trying to – right now they're in a lot of a competition phase. Here in the next week or so, give or take, it'll kind of get narrowed down to here's the ones, here's the twos, here's the guys and where they slot. And then it becomes, a, hey, everybody's got to become a star in their own role. And they got to bind to what that role is. And each game is going to be somebody new. But we got to play with tempo. We've got to play unselfish. And we have an identity. We know what it is. We've got to be mentally and physically tougher than everybody we play. We're not there yet. It's a process. That's what fall camp's for. Um, you know, yesterday I didn't think we had a very good practice offensively. Today was better. Wasn't where it needed to be. But they responded a little bit. And we just got to keep pushing them through that as coaches because um, we know who we need to be. We know who we've got to be. And it's got to be game one, like you said. Um, but and there's no time to, to go out there and kind of figure it out on the go. We got to be ready to go, and so that's what we're trying to put them in those scenarios right now. Look at, the, look at the scrimmage specifically in this camp in general. How, how would you like the tempo? We've heard you and guys talk about getting back to yeah. our identity a lot. It, it's been better. The guys are playing at the tempo we want. Uh, I think we're doing a good job of, of putting them in positions and 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 doing the tempo the way we need, at the end of the day, now it's going to become to when you get to a game, are you productive? I mean, if we're not moving the chains, there's not going to be any tempo. I mean, you can, try, you can run three plays as fast as you want, but if you're punting, you're off the field. So, um, again, we've said it a million times, that initial first down usually helps because the momentum goes or an explosive play really goes a long way in the momentum category for us. About big plays and, and making plays. Eli Stowe's done some of that early on. How much has he helped himself maybe jump into the mix a little bit already? This oh, he's caught our attention. There's no question. Um, he's another guy kind of in the vein of Cameron Martin that he's done some really good things that says, okay, we need to you know, keep working with this guy. He needs to be able to help us this year. Uh, and there's several freshmen. They need to be able to help us this year. And so we just got to keep kind of pushing them through it. You can't really baby them. You can't bring them along slow. You just got to throw them the fire, throw them in there with the big boys, and, and they're going to learn to swim. And so he's done enough that says, hey, he's going to be ready to help us. And what capacity, I don't know. Um, you know, but we're going to keep pushing him, and, and he's got a bright future. What other freshmen are in that mix there? You know, obviously, we've talked about the receiver position we need help. So you got a guy like Eli Stove. you got a guy like Nate Craig. Um, you know, you hope a guy like Kyle Davis, when we get him back, could be in that capacity as well. Um, obviously, we're trying to give Cameron Martin every chance we can to find out where his role will be, even if it's whether he's got a prominent role, whether it's a depth role. 
Uh, he's a young guy, and just by the nature of that position, we need him. Um, so those are some guys that just off the top of my head, especially at the skill spots. And we have some young guys that we need to develop depth in the O-line, but they're not necessarily true freshmen. Where's Darius Slayton standing there? Uh, yeah, he's, he's right in the mix now. I mean, he's repping the ones and twos every day. And um, at times, he's really shown great strides. He's caught the ball better overall in camp by far than he did in the spring. Um, and he's a smart kid. He's one of those guys, sometimes when things get moving fast, he's just got to process the information correctly. But he can really run. He's a big body. Uh, he's one of those guys that we're going to need to, uh, you know, have a breakout year and step up for us. Brent, what I was ask you was, uh, at what point with Kyle do you get to it where you say, well, we just haven't seen him enough at all to even feel comfortable putting him in the first game? With who? Kyle. Kyle Davis. Oh, Kyle Davis. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean... You know, it, the receiver position is such that, you know, you'd like to get at least two weeks with guys. A uh, full game plan a week plus one. Um, and that, a lot of that will depend on him because freshmen are different. Every guy's different anyways. And then when you're going to have a smaller window, it's just going to depend on him probably. What would you say uh, would be the biggest thing that Sean White has going for him in this race right now? You know, obviously experience. Um, he's, he's, he's gotten his feet wet and been there. Um, he's had some disappointments playing, but he's also had some successes playing. I think uh, he's proven to his teammates that he's tough as nails and they can trust him on the field. And so that helps. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of room to grow. Can you kind of maybe address this perception that the staff has determined that you need a running option at quarterback when there's history to suggest that that's not exactly true? You've had a Ryan Applin, you've had a Chris Todd. Correct. You and a Mitch Mustaine. Dang, you threw me in there. You're really desperate for people on that one. Well, <laughs> you, know, you know I won state in the quarter, right? I did. I did. Oh, okay. I mean, it was in Arkansas and – I don't know how fast everybody was, but um, so yeah, I think everybody has a short memory, as we understand. I mean, in the last just six years, you've had Cam Newton and Nick Marshall. That's two pretty big splashes, and both those guys, what could they do? They could run the football very, very well. Um, I think also you just in the last three years, you're looking, hey, Nick Marshall, two of those years. That's what's in everybody's mind. So the vast majority of people, when they think of Auburn right now, that's what they think of: Nick Marshall, Auburn running quarterback, and that's just what they see. We've had success with all kinds, and whoever that guy is, we feel confident we can build around it. Now, just like last year, guys take a lot of the heat sometimes, and, and some of it's rightfully so, but we've got to be good around them, and they've got to have a good supporting cast. So whoever that guy is, we're going to have to be better around them. But to your case in point, there's no question that a guy who can either run as a dual threat or at least extend plays puts more pressure on a defense. Everybody knows that. Um, but to say you can't win without it, obviously, like you said, we've done it. But I think it's just because it's such – it's the, it's the nearest thing in the rearview mirror to everybody that that's just what everybody assumes. You mentioned the offense kind of as, as a unit. When you look at the quarterback competition, how much is that competition going to come down to how the, the rest of the offense responds to one of those guys as opposed to necessarily just their individual skills? Well, to say that we're going to decide off what everybody else feels would probably be inaccurate, but I think it, it has a large degree of weight to be carried with. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> That's your leader on the field. And it's going to be really hard if those other 10 guys out there, and really the whole team, doesn't believe in him. And so it's very important to us that, that the team rallies around whoever that is and believes in him. So that's a very, very important factor. And that's something that I've talked with those guys about. And I've said with you all before, hey, one of the criteria is who's going to get out there and make those other guys on the field with them better. And that's a big part of that. I know you're not coaching the offensive line, but you've worked with, with the centers a whole lot. What have you seen out of Xavier? <laughs> Yeah. from the spring to now and how he's running things on the offensive line? You know, there's a lot more confidence. Um, you know, he's been here a couple of years. I think he's used to Coach Hand now in his style. He, I think there's um, – he's just more confident. Now, he's doing really some really good things in practice. Um, you know, he's communicating better. He's doing all those things. But he hadn't played a lot of games in our league uh, at that position. And so it's kind of like the running back thing. Until you get out there and do it, you know – you always wonder how guys are going to react, but I've been really pleased with how he's reacted in, in fall camp. And I'd say just confidence is probably the biggest thing. These, these scrimmages may be just as important for him as they are. There's, there's no question. And uh, center's a huge part of our offense. Uh, obviously, he, him and the quarterback, the only two guys that touch it every snap, but he, just in the communication and kind of being a little bit of a field general. And uh, I know I think he's done a really, really good job. And it helps that he's got a guy like Al and a guy like Braden beside him, guys that played a lot of snaps too. See y'all.